Hello, and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where everything's made up and the numbers don't matter. No, wait. Hello, and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Dr. Joseph Vandehei, and in today's episode, we continue answering that most pernicious question, what is math? Now, in the last episode, I talked a bit about why calculus is such a hard class for some students. In short, it's because the complexity of its algorithms is greater than anything students face up to that point. But calculus is still not the greatest challenge that students face in a math curriculum, not even by a long shot. So typically, after taking a few semesters of calculus, maybe a bit of differential equations and linear algebra, then comes the roadblock, introduction to proofs. Intro to proofs goes by a lot of nicknames, my personal favorite being the pivot class. We call it that because almost everything that you do in math up to intro to proofs bears basically no resemblance to almost everything you do after intro to proofs. Now I have to put a little caveat on that. I say almost everything because technically geometry uses proofs, but geometry isn't that well integrated with the rest of the math curriculum, so blah blah blah. Now this is actually kind of the challenge of writing this episode. I've lived for so long on the far side of the pivot that it's kind of hard to talk about it to, say, people who haven't moved across that pivot before. But hey, that's what this is about, right? Now contrary to my joke at the start of this episode, when you're doing math prior to intro to proofs, you're usually interested in a number, a numerical result. Multiply these two numbers together, find the slope, find x, how fast, how far, how long, how high. And you might say, well, of course, no, duh, math is about numbers. But you know, I know a lot of mathematicians who get by without ever really using numbers, or at least not using them all that much. And that's, well, it's not because everything is made up and the numbers don't matter, but it's because the numbers are no longer the focus. They're just another tool in the toolbox. The focus of mathematics after introduction to proofs is, well, not to put too pretentious a spin on this, truth. And I mean that in the sense of a complete, logically derived statement. Not maybe true, not probably true, 100% complete truth. So for example, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is a true statement. And so is the sum of any two even numbers is another even number. And so is, um, oh yeah, every positive integer can be expressed as the sum of four perfect squares. These statements are absolutely true. And I have to really emphasize that point because it's what makes math so different from everything else, even from our nearest neighbors in the hard sciences. We don't think these results are correct. We don't just have good evidence. We know they're correct. It's not like we're going to find a magic pair of even numbers somewhere out there that add up to being an odd number. No. Every pair of even numbers adds up to an even number, each and every time. We know that. So how do we know that these statements are true? By proving them. And it's proofs that are the lifeblood of modern mathematics, as critical to the existence of modern math as words are to literature. A mathematical proof starts with statements that are already known to be true, and uses logic to derive new true statements from them. Let's go through an example. Here we have a proof of the fact that the sum of any two even numbers is even. To start with, we suppose that n and m are any two even numbers. We want to show that their sum, n plus m, will also be an even number, regardless of what n and m were. Since we assume that n and m are even, this means that they can be written as n equals 2x and m equals 2y for some integers x and y. Therefore, n plus m equals 2x plus 2y equals twice x plus y. Now since x and y are integers, so is x plus y. Therefore, n plus m is 2 times an integer, i.e. even. And that completes the proof. You can see in this proof where I have used facts that I already knew to be true. For example, I used the definition of being even. Namely, that being even means you can be written as twice another integer. In another case, I used the distributive property of multiplication and addition. Namely, that 2x plus 2y equals 2 times x plus y. These facts are strung together with logical connectors. For example, because I know that n and m are even, 
I can make use of the properties associated to them being even. Even this simple proof glosses over some logical details. For example, I took it as a given that in that big string of equalities, the thing on the far left equaled the thing on the far right, that is, n plus m equaled twice x plus y. Mathematicians indulge in a lot of glossing over smaller points if we think that they are obvious enough, but we have to be open to having any step in our proof being questioned. Now hopefully this small example will give you some idea of how proof-based thinking differs so much from mathematics as most people understand it. First of all, many students, especially before college, are used to only the answer mattering. So you can make some mistakes or fudge some details and it won't really matter too much. But this no longer works. In a logical chain of assertions, if any part of the logic fails, then the whole statement is invalidated. There's no freebies in logic. Second of all, about that uh, glossing over I was talking about, this presents a big challenge to students who are learning intro to proofs, because there's lots of things that students think are obvious which mathematicians don't, and uh, vice versa. It's really a bunch of unspoken social rules that just have to be learned over time. Third, and perhaps greatest of all, remember algorithmic thinking? That thing that's been bored into students' skulls in every single class. That thing that's the whole reason why some people enjoy doing mathematics. Yeah, that's kind of right out the window now. An algorithm, even a really complex algorithm, is unlikely to solve anything but the simplest of proofs. There's just too many steps involved. So there needs to be a lot more creativity, innovation, and just outright mental elbow grease. It's all of these things put together that make Intro to Proofs one of the hardest classes that a student will take in a math curriculum. Stepping back for just a moment, you may recall that in my proof earlier, I based this big new true statement on some true statements I already knew. And those true statements, presumably, were based on other true statements, which were based on other true statements, which were, you kind of see where this is going. Is it turtles all the way down? Well, no. In mathematics, we always have to have some foundational assumptions, which we call axioms. We'll talk a little bit more about those next time on Math and Tea, but that's all for now because um, I'm out of tea.